everyone welcome to pwo english youtube channel i'm shalini somashekar your botany teacher and i'm making this video for all the neat 2025 aspirants i'm sure you all must have started giving full syllabus mock test by now if you haven't already it's high time that you start it i'm getting messages from a lot of my students saying that every time they've been attempting a full syllabus mock test their score is stuck between let's say 550 to 600 or 580 to 610 so they are not able to get beyond this range so they have been asking me if if there is anything that they can do to improve the score of course there is one thing that you can do this one thing might seem like a boring thing to do but if only you do it it's going to you know help you skyrocket your score so what exactly is this thing i'm talking about how you can analyze your performance after each mock test you give now why is analyzing your performance important analyzing your performance will show you where exactly you're going wrong unless you know where you're going wrong you cannot make corrections right even if you think about the greatest of athletes it could be ronaldo it could be virat kohli every time after they play a match they will analyze the performance if they find uh, issues with the speed in which they are running or whatever it is uh, they will make corrections in that they will work in that direction and that is what makes them the greatest of all time right so if you also want to be the greatest of all time in your particular stream then one job that you must do is analyze how you're doing right now and find out where you're going wrong so that you can make the necessary improvements now how exactly do we do that i'll give you like a template for how you can do it now let's say you've taken a a uh, mock test you've given a mock test and you've answered uh, all of the 180 questions now what i'm saying right now is not specific to biology it's general you have to do it with all the subjects so what you can do is you have to make a table like this one where you have all the question numbers listed okay take a notebook and just write 1 to 45 physics 1 to 45 chemistry and so on right next to that make another column and write correct or incorrect right next to it make another column that has reason in the first row and then write remark okay make a table very similar to what you're seeing right now now there are three possibilities that can happen with each question either you answer the question correctly you get plus 4 marks you answer a question but it's not right it's incorrect you get minus 1 or you leave the question unattempted that will not give you any mark like it will be considered zero no positive no negative now if you think about the question that you got correctly answered there are two reasons why you could have gotten that question correctly answered it's not that every time you have a question answered correctly you knew the concept you understood the question and you marked the correct answer sometimes it so happens that you have a doubt between two options and you probably guessed one as the correct option and you turned out to be lucky and that was the correct answer and that's the reason why you got that mark or if you have studied really well great that also could have fetched you correct uh, answer right so if you have attempted a question when it goes right it could be because you knew the concept really well you answered it because of your own effort or you guessed it and by chance because of luck you've got it correct again when you get a question answered incorrectly there are two possibilities one thing is you didn't know it you just guessed it and you ended up becoming unlucky for that question and you got a negative mark another thing is you knew the concept really well you understood that concept you were anxious while you were reading that question and you read the question incorrectly after reading that question incorrectly you ended up marking the answer wrong despite spending hours learning that concept that is also one of the reasons why people get uh, uh, answers incorrectly right and the third thing is you didn't attempt the question at all probably because you didn't know the concept you were not sure enough or because you don't believe or trust yourself well enough right so these are some of the things that can happen now let's see some questions and i'll show you how you can fill up that table we'll go one question at a time take five questions for example i've taken questions from biological classification Uh, all pyqs okay so here's our first question chrysophytes euglenoids dinoflagellates slime molds are included in which kingdom this is a pretty straightforward easy question in the options you have monera protista fungi animalia 
Most of you will know the answer to this. You know the concept, you remember this, so you will answer this correctly. So if you are answering this as protista, you will go to your table. This is our first question. The first question I answered correctly. Reason? Because I knew it. Remark? Nothing. I know the concept. Good job. That's all. We will take a look at the second question. Now, after karyogamy followed by meiosis, spores are produced exogenously in. Karyogamy nuclear fusion has happened. Uh, meiosis has happened. Some sort of sexual spore has been produced. Uh, and these spores are produced exogenously. In which of the given organisms? You haven't bothered to, let's say, remember the examples. You haven't bothered to memorize the examples. Now, if you look at these options, uh, you have Neurospora, Alternaria, Agaricus and Saccharomyces. You see and it feels like uh, some of these terms are familiar, some of them are not. Agaricus looks very familiar. So, you take a guess and randomly mark Agaricus. You don't know the concept, you don't know the examples. But marking Agaricus, you got lucky. This is a correct answer. Now, when you go back to your table. The second question was also correct. But what was the reason? You got lucky. You had guessed it. Now, what is your remark? What was that concept about? It was about examples, fungal examples. You didn't know examples. Right? So, that's why you failed to answer it. So, your remark here would be memorize examples. So, you know that this is your pain point. You know that you're, you don't know the examples very well. So, now you have direction. You can work towards it. We will do the same thing with a third question. Now, the question is, mad cow disease is caused by an organism which has, in the options you have inert crystalline, abnormally folded protein, free RNA without protein coat, free DNA without protein coat. Again, you don't know the answer here, but you have watched some Tuka strategy on YouTube. So, you think whenever there are two very similar options given, one of them must be the correct answer. So, you have applied the random Tuka strategy that you watched on YouTube to this question here. So, let's say you answer it as D. But the answer is not D. The correct answer here is abnormally folded protein, which is B. Mad cow disease is caused by prions, which is abnormally folded proteins. So, in the third question, you answered it incorrectly because you guessed it. Remark, what is your remark here? You don't have conceptual clarity. You need to study about viroids and prions. Whatever the concept is. We will move on to our next question, which is a question from 2019 NEET. Which of the following statements is incorrect? You are in a state of anxiety, you are not reading the question correctly. Because you are in such a rush and also anxious simultaneously, you read this question as which of the following statements is correct. Your mind has read it incorrectly because you are in a state of tension. What will happen then? Prions consist of abnormally folded proteins. Yeah, that is true. Because I am in a state of rush, I will mark this correctly. Because I already got the answer, I will not look at the other options. What happens next? If you looked at the other options, at least you would have found out that more than one statement is correct and gone back and looked at the question and realized that you were supposed to identify the incorrect statement. But if you are in a rush and anxious during exam, many such mistakes can happen and all the time and effort you have taken to study and master concepts will be washed down the drain. So, if you are facing such problems where you know the concept but because, because you are in a state of stress, you are not able to perform properly, 
we will make a note of that as well in our table. So how are we going to approach this question? We answered this as the correct answer, but this is not the correct answer. Uh, yeah, option D is actually the correct answer. It's not like you didn't know, you knew it. But because you didn't read the question correctly, you failed to answer it, right? So for the fourth question, let's say you got it incorrectly. You knew it because you did not read properly. Incorrect reading. What should you do? You should learn to relax more, read, learn to read quickly and correctly. Okay? Maybe you can try some breathing techniques and meditation to calm your anxiety. When you are not in a state of stress, the likelihood of you making such errors will come down drastically. Okay? Now, last one. We have our fifth question here. Identify the fungi which do not belong to the group of other fungi in the following. Now, when you look at this question, you have sac fungi, puffballs, mushrooms and bracket fungi in the options. Somewhere you know that sac fungi is the answer. The others belong to Bacidiomyces. But your instinct is telling you that it is option A. But somewhere you fear that you will get it incorrectly and get negative marking. So despite knowing it, because of the fear of negative marking, you will not answer this question. You will leave it unattempted. Okay. So here we will say, I left it. Did you know it? You knew it. What should you do? Build more self-confidence. Right? So you do this for all 45 questions in all of the four subjects. At the end, you will know how many times you got negative marking, how many times your questions were correctly answered, how many times among the correct questions you guessed, how many times you actually know the concept. You will get the whole data for that. Depending upon how many of each you get, you can fine tune your performance. If you got more of correct answers because you knew it, then you are in the perfect correct direction. You just go on doing whatever you are doing. If you have more of you guessed it and got it correctly, you have to remember the specifics, whatever is your pain points, whatever is your um, struggles, you have to sit with it and focus more on that. If you are reading hastily in a state of anxiety, then you have to develop better focus, stay calm, read correctly and quickly. Okay, so that is a skill that you need to develop. If you don't know it, then you know what to do. Pick up your books and start reading. If you leave a lot of questions unattempted because you are not sure of the answer, you are not sure of your, I mean, instinct, you are doubting yourself a lot, then it's time maybe that you start trusting yourself a little bit more. Okay, so somewhere you have to find a balance, right? So, yeah, that is it. Once you do this, you can see how your score will improve. But sitting down with your paper after an exam and marking which is correct, why is it correct, it might seem like a boring task for a lot of you, but you have to do it if you want to improve your score. Right? Let me know if you practice this. And also, if you are taking like offline tests, you can start practicing on OMR sheets because that will give you bubbling practice. It shouldn't be like the first time you go to uh, the exam, that's the first time you're ever answering or using an OMR, OMR sheet. So do that practice as well, whenever possible when you're taking offline mock tests, right? Instead of just sticking on the question paper, use your o OMRs. It's high time you start doing it. I hope this helps. Let me know if it helped in the comments. I'll see you again with another video. Until then, keep hustling, keep studying very hard. It's the need right now. Exams are coming very close. After May 4th, you can relax as much as you want. Okay, give it your 200% this time. All the best.